Blend is dead. That's right, the popular feature that makes blending two or more images together so unbelievably easy doesn't seem that great anymore. Not only is it incredibly limited in its functionality, it just doesn't produce particularly good results. I mean, just look at the artifacts in these images. They basically make the entire image completely useless to me. So what if I told you there was a much better way to do this? A method that not only produces cleaner results, but one that generates images that are far more creative and at the same time give you full control over the final image. So are you curious to find out more about these methods that I'm talking about? Well then stick around and I'll show you how it's done. So today I'm going to walk you through a couple of different examples that show you how to use this method. Each example will represent a different type of case where you might be tempted to blend two images together. Midjourney's blend command, which is nothing but a more user-friendly way of using image prompts, is a great way to mix two concepts together relatively quickly. However, it also usually falls flat when it comes to producing crisp images. I'll show you exactly what I mean by this in a minute. But first, let's take a look at the images that I picked for this first example. My first image is of a slick hotel lobby. I got this particular image from Unsplash. And now I would like to blend this particular concept with another image that I also found on Unsplash. It's a photo of the Royal Greenhouses in Brussels, Belgium. So traditionally, if I wanted to blend these two images together, I would have two different ways of doing this. Option one would be that I simply copy the URLs of each image, and then I use them as image prompts in a classic imagine command. Option two is to use the blend command in Midjourney and simply let it do its thing. Now, to be honest, both methods are not particularly great for what I'm trying to achieve, but blend is particularly annoying because I have literally no control or very little control over the parameters that are used for the command. Just as an example, I wasn't even able to manually add the version five parameter at the end. And then you end up with images that look a little bit like these. Remember those horrible artifacts that I mentioned at the beginning of the video? Well, they're in this one as well. And due to the different formats in terms of aspect ratio of the two input images, you also get these horrible black borders on the side. The good news is there are a number of much better ways to do this. And they all involve the use of the describe command as well as multi-prompts. So let's start off with the easiest method. So let's just assume for a minute that you actually liked the blended images that you got from the traditional way of doing things. And you just want something that looks a little bit crisper and has a little bit more variation to it. Well, what you would do is you would take one of those four images that you liked, and then you would ask Midjourney to describe it. So I'm going to use this particular image here as an example. After a couple of seconds, Midjourney provides me with these four startup prompts. You can then pick whichever one of these four you like best, or you can re-roll the describe command as well. I eventually decided to go with the very first one, and then I hit the button that said one. And here are the first images that it generated for me. I think we can all agree that these are pretty stunning images. Here's another set. This one looks most like a hotel lobby. And this one is my absolute favorite. I know for some of you, this might already be a huge leap forward in how you do things. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure that most of you have actually never considered using the describe command and the blend command in this particular order and combination. But guess what? We can take things one step further. The next method that I'm about to show you works very differently. So instead of blending the two images and then asking Midjourney to describe the newly generated image, we're going to do it the completely other way around. So let's go back to our two initial images. If I run each one of these images through the describe command, then I get the following starter prompt suggestions from Midjourney. At this stage, you could already try out different descriptions that it has suggested to you and see which one fits best for what you're trying to achieve. But personally, I actually try to stay relatively open-minded and I just pick the one where I think that the prompt sounds best. So in this case, I picked number one from the hotel lobby and number three from the greenhouse. I then use both of these starter prompts to craft a new multi-prompt that consists of two segments and it looks a little bit like this. 
Imagine an elegant lobby with lighting and white marble carpet in the style of wood veneer mosaics, Asian-inspired, UHD image, Khmer art, rendered in Maya, light aquamarine and light amber intricate ceiling designs. And that's our first segment. And our second segment is the glass roof of the Sydney Conservatory in the style of Fernando Botero, tropical landscapes, gray and emerald Gustave Moreau, national geographic photo, high quality photo, nature inspired. So I haven't made any significant changes to the prompt other than adding the version parameter for version five and the aspect ratio parameter with a ratio of 16 to nine. Technically, you could add anything you want to these parameters, and you could also change the weights of the segments. But let's go with this plain vanilla prompt first. And here's what I meant when I said that these methods produce far more creative results than simply blending them. Just look at that beautiful ornamented glass ceiling. And here's what we get if I set the stylized parameter to 750. By the way, this is a really great example of where Midjourney's new permutations can be really, really handy. Iterating through different variations becomes so much easier to set up by doing it this way. Okay, so let's assume you're not 100% happy with the image that you got. Well, obviously you could make all sorts of changes to your prompts, including the camera angles, until you get pretty much, you know, the result that you're looking for. Or you could simply play around with the weights of your segments like this. Note that the only thing that I've changed in this prompt is the weighting of two, which I've added to the first segment. This tells Midjourney to assign twice as much relative importance to the first segment of the prompt, which represents our hotel lobby. And here's what we get. You can see that the glass ceiling is less important in these images, and it looks much less like a greenhouse. The camera is also more leveled, putting more emphasis on the hotel lobby. So now let's turn things around and put more emphasis onto the greenhouse. I've removed the weight of two from the first segment, so now it's only one and I've added a weight of two on the second segment instead. So we can expect the image of the greenhouse to play a much bigger role this time. And lo and behold, that's exactly what has happened. We get four images of beautiful greenhouse-like structures filled with ornaments. The camera is also looking up at the roof, exactly as in the original image that we fed into Midjourney. And if I now set the stylized parameter to 1000, then things go really crazy. Now, the only thing that's bothering me here now is the fact that we actually have those artifacts again. So let's try our little trick from method one, one more time. I'm going to feed the top right image back into the describe command. And what I get are the following four starter prompts. I then select number two on that list and I add the version parameter at the end. And now look at these images. Now, not all of these may suit your very particular needs. However, remember these are 100% text-based. That also means it's relatively easy for you to make those slight adjustments to the prompt that you need in order to get the image that you want. This entire process is far more versatile than anything you could have previously done with your standard methods. Okay, so now it's time to move on to another example. Okay, so I, now this might sound a bit contradictory, but please just bear with me for a moment. I want to create interiors that blend together the typical New York industrial style apartment loft with the Santorini style holiday home. And for this, I'm going to use three different images. I like this one because of the big open space, the plants, as well as the furniture that looks relatively exotic. I also really like this one because of the wooden flooring and the red bricks are very prominent within this image. And finally, this image of a Santorini holiday home with the typical organically shaped limestone in pure white. First two images are real photos taken from the internet, while the Santorini image was created directly within Midjourney. Okay, so before we proceed, let's first have a look at what happens if we simply blend these three images together. So I'm not even going to use the blend command here. And instead, I'll add all three image prompts and add my parameters just so this method even stands a chance. So even though these are actually pretty decent interiors, they're not really the style that I'm looking for. And once again, you can also see how Midjourney starts to add things that just don't make sense and don't work. In all four images, the staircase is either completely malformed or it just leads into nowhere. So we could try to use my very first method of blended reverse engineering. 
and that would probably fix the issue with the stairs. However, it will not actually blend the concepts the way I want them to. Let me show you real quick. I took this image and I ran it through the describe command. I then got these four starter prompts and decided to go with the very first one. And I added the version parameter at the very end. The images that I then got were really great. No more malformed stairs, slick modern interior design, and I would probably stay here if I could afford it. But it's just not what I wanted to achieve. So instead, I ran the original two loft images through the describe command. It gave me some really good starter prompts to work with, and I actually tested them to figure out which ones were the best. I eventually decided to go with number four on each one of them. And I then put all of them together into one big multi-prompt that consists of three segments. The first and the second segment are from the described loft departments, while the third segment is the original text prompt that I used to create the Santorini interiors in the first place. So even though I know that the loft segments have more weight since there are two of them, I'm going to leave the weights for all three segments at one. And it then gave me these four images that I actually really like. The only problem is that none of them actually have the white limestone staircase that I was looking for. So maybe I do have to make some adjustments to the weights of the segments. All I did was add a weight of two to the third segment, effectively matching the weight of the first two segments combined. So now my interiors have a white limestone staircase and generally more organically shaped elements. However, they also no longer look anything like a New York style loft apartment. So I decided to do something a little bit more drastic and maybe even a little bit weird. I took this image, which was generated by using one of the starter prompts for the lofts. And I also took this image from my Santorini interiors. And then I had a little bit fun in Affinity Photo. No, this is not meant as a joke. And no, this is also not meant to demonstrate any particularly great editing skills. This is pure and simple photo bashing. I then took this beautiful new image and I ran it straight through Midjourney's describe command. Midjourney then proposed to me these four starter prompts from which I picked the very last one. And Midjourney then produced the following images based on that very same prompt. Now I will admit that my staircase is definitely not made of white limestone. However, it is white and it is within a loft. So next I use the text prompt from our very first loft apartment and use that as a first segment. And for the second segment, I use the description from our photo bashed image that we just created. So I'm hoping that it will keep most of the New York loft aesthetic, but still somehow integrate my white staircase. So as you can see, it definitely used the white color, but not really in the way I had hoped for. So then I decided to make some manual adjustments to the prompt instead. Notice how I added made of white organically shaped limestone into the second segment. This should signal to Midjourney that I want my staircase to be made of limestone. And sure enough, it definitely had an impact. But the real beauty of multi-prompts is that you can adjust the way it's to your liking until you get exactly what you want. So I used the exact same prompt as before and only adjusted the weight of the third segment. Here's the image with a weight of two, now a weight of three, or even something as high as four. With each increment, you're increasing the relative importance of that particular segment within the multi-prompt. While this can produce extremely interesting and aesthetic results, I think it's also obvious that we've distanced ourselves quite a bit from the New York style loft department. Or have we? Let me try one more thing. I must admit that I did this completely on a hunch. I added white spiral staircase made of white organically shaped limestone to the first segment. I also added New York style loft with high ceilings to the second segment. And finally, I added the stylized parameter with a value of 1000 to get more creative results. And while the results aren't perfect, I'm actually quite happy with how everything turned out. It definitely looks a lot more like a loft now, and my staircase is quite evidently very white. 
And you know what? It's this kind of experimentation that I personally feel creates some of the most interesting results overall. So instead of trying to force Midjourney to produce exactly and precisely what you have in mind, why not keep an open mind and just see you know, what it comes up with? Sometimes it'll be better than what you had in mind yourself. Oh, and by the way, these methods that I've shown you here today, they're not limited to interior design. You can use these on pretty much any type of image that you're trying to create in Midjourney. For example, I tried to combine these images of Spider-Man and the Joker using my multi-prompt image blending method. Midjourney happily obliged and created Joker-Man and the Spidey. And here's another one where I use a close-up portrait of Spider-Man and good old David Hasselhoff from Baywatch. And not only did it give me these hilarious interpretations of an elderly Spider-Man, it also taught me a new keyword that I had never heard of before, grandparent core. And of course, you can apply these methods to landscapes and paintings as well. So something like these two images will eventually turn into this beautiful work of art, or something like this if you play around with the weights. So as you can see, the possibilities are absolutely endless. And instead of sticking to a relatively simplistic approach of just blending two simple images together, why not try to use some of the methods that I shared with you today? Remember, method one is blended reverse engineering, where you take the blended image and then you ask Midjourney to describe it, and then you work from there. And method two is multi-prompt image blending, where you describe your original images that you want to blend, and then you use those descriptions as segments within your multi-prompt. Remember, you'll find all of the assets, the images, and the prompts used in this video in the supporting material linked in the description below. And if you'd like to learn more about various forms of prompting in Midjourney, how to create a graphic novel, or how to create product design, then make sure you check out some of these videos and playlists right here. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Keep on learning and take care.